All right, welcome to uh, episode five. We are going to look at tet meshing. So the last couple episodes we've done uh, surface meshing, of course, uh, very important, especially in arrow. But every now and then you're going to have a part that you want to look at a solid mesh of. Uh, and you're going to have to choose whether you want to do a tet mesh or you want to do a solid mat mesh, the hex mesh. Right? Um, the choice will be yours and, and yours alone uh, for all of my Legends of the Hidden Temple fans. The uh, tet mesh is going to be very easy to do. Hex, the solid map, this hex mesh is going to require a lot more work that we're going to cover in the next next episode. Uh, so today we're just going to look at this tet mesh, which is going to be this very easy to use, but at a cost. And that cost is going to be normally degrees of freedom. All right, number of nodes and elements that get created is going to be four, five, six times as much as what normally would be made with a solid map mesh. Um, I forgot to scale this part when it came in, as I always forget to do. Uh, so I'm just going to scale this real quick by a thousand. What units am I in? I don't know. Doesn't matter to me. And uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go in and tet mesh this part, right? So um, all of the additional options are going to be over here in this hamburger menu. We're going to talk through some of these. Uh, one at a time, show you which ones I think are important, which ones you should probably focus on. Uh, select the solid that I'd like to mesh. Uh, put in a mesh size. Six is going to be fine because I'm going to use that later for all of my models. Okay. And uh, we can kind of see here what this part looks like. I can turn on the uh, mesh. Again, the mesh is a representation of the geometry, so we're seeing some of the geometry bleed through a little bit. Uh, we could turn the geometry off if we so choose, but I'll leave it on. Okay. And this is kind of your standard tet mesh. I did no, no other options other than click and put in an element size. Okay. Uh, what I like to check here is the number of elements that get created. Change my selector elements, and I have about 16,000 elements, okay. uh, which is fine. Uh, but I want a little bit better, especially as I look at these holes. I see that they're not well captured, right? You know, they're okay captured, but they could be better. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'm going to delete all these elements, just select them all and hit delete on my keyboard. Come to tet mesh. Um, <clears throat> change that to that default size. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to turn on this curvature based refinement. Okay. And the curvature based refinement is going to say, well, here's an average size, but I'm also going to allow you to go down to smaller than that if needed, if if I'm not able to accurately capture the curvature of the surface. Okay, So with one simple click of turning on curvature-based refinement, I'm going to see that the mesh, especially around these holes, is going to be much, much better than what it was with just kind of the default uh, element size. Right. So I see now the, the, the meshing is a little more dense in this area. Um, also in, say, areas around these other holes. So all of the holes now are, are, are much, much better meshed. Okay, And all of this was done with a simple click, right? I just had to turn on that curvature-based refinement, and uh, we were able to more accurately capture this. But at what cost, you might ask? And the cost now is that we probably have about two times as many number of elements, right? So if I kind of see my elements have about almost 30,000 instead of 16, let's we'll call it 2x. Okay, uh, so twice the number of elements in order to get a little bit better refinement. Right, so thirty thousand is not a lot of elements these days, but you can think as you apply this to a much larger model, a much larger part, a large assembly, that the tet mesh can really, really get out of hand. Right, so be extremely careful about your mesh size when you go about doing this. Um, once again, I'm going to go ahead and, and delete these elements. Um, and the last thing that I'll point out in this tet meshing panel our tet meshing uh, tool <coughs> is at the very, very bottom here, it says quality control criteria. And this is actually a pretty stringent criteria. Uh, and you're able to pick one of three for, especially for, for tet mesh. And I say the two that really matter are going to be tet collapse and volume skew. So you collapse is normally the, the major one. And what we're going to say is we're going to make sure that this tet mesh has at least you know, point one, right? And if you'd like to know what tet collapse is, the help document 
uh, explains what all of this means, but this is just essentially how, you know, poor of a quality of an element that's being made. Okay. So I see point 0.1 here. Everything needs to be above point 0.1. So once again, I'm going to just go ahead and mesh this. Okay. And um, I want to, to see what my, my tech collapse is. Uh, so right now the 3D element quality visualization is still saved in a panel. So we do have to go back and turn these panels on. And under the tools, this happens to be the check elements panel. 3D tech collapse. Uh, if I click on it, I'm going to look at the bottom left here. It says zero out of almost 30,000 elements have failed. If you would like to see this, there's, I believe, uh, a sign plot is what you would like to do. <coughs> okay, so none of these elements, you know, were near that point one, uh, which is perfectly fine. So I'm going to delete all these elements. And in fact, we saw that the minimum was like 0.28. And what I mean by this is actually a hard limit. Um, if I type 0.3 in here, you know, I know that the mesh that was generated is not going to work because 0.28 was the lowest bound. So now it has to be above 0.3. Okay, so I'm going to say we'll hit, hit mesh here. And the reason that I point this out is that normally when you go and tet mesh something, if you use these options, these kind of... Uh, refinement option that um, you're going to, to notice that um, some elements can start to fail because they're getting too small with respect to the solver and solvers don't like that. So um, now I see that the Mintech collapse is 0 0.3, you know, 0 0.06. So still none have failed and the Mintech collapse is better. So I'm pointing this out now. So it's just that, you know, if you know that you have a pretty poor geometry and you're just going to throw a tet mesh on this and you want it to really work the first time, I suggest that you probably change this to at least 0 0.25, 0 0.2 at the minimum. I think that's what Nastran and OptiStruct take as the like bare minimum. So um, I point that out. Just uh, keep this in mind. It's easier to do it now instead of trying to go back and fix it later once you got everything set up. So Okay. Uh, last couple of things that we can do, and this is going to be true for the hex mesh as well. Uh, I probably won't cover it because I won't have time, but um, I could actually seed a 2D mesh onto a face first before I do my tet mesh, okay? Um, or my solid mesh for that matter. Um, okay, so what do you mean by that? Well, okay, well, let's say I want to, you know, have a little more control over this this surface, right? So I'll go ahead and and uh, mesh this. The only kind of key thing here is that you'll want your mesh to be um, trias. They could be right trias if you'd so choose, but they need to be triangular elements in order for a tet mesh to be made. So keep that in mind. So I'll change this to trias. Go ahead and hit mesh. And the nice thing about this is that I have all the interactive capability uh, of the 2D meshing, right? You didn't see any of that in the tet mesh. The tet mesh didn't really care, but if I'd like to come and change the density of both of these, put a few more elements around here. Okay, I most certainly can. And then what we're going to do with regards to the tet mesh in the background is that this is going to be used as a guide. Okay, so I'm essentially guaranteeing that the surface of the solid mesh is going to look like this uh, when I hit mesh. So this is taking like this 2D seed of, of this face and using that for the 3D mesh. Okay. Uh, the only thing that I will caution you about is that now in your model, you have two different element types, right? You obviously have your tet elements, the big solid elements, but you also have this face of triad elements. Okay. So keep that in mind. If you were using this just to kind of seed, Maybe you want to go and delete this. Uh, the other kind of logical explanation here is these are congruent, right? These are node to node uh, connected. This is just a, essentially a skin of elements on top of the 3D mesh now. You could use this as like a membrane, right? If you wanted to extract uh, stress or something a little more meaningful off the surface of this part. Okay, but just keep in mind that, you know, 
if you do try to run this and you didn't give this a property, you didn't give this a thickness, you know, you missed something out, uh, that could be a, an issue to be dealt with. So just keep that in mind that the 2D mesh will, re will remain um, there if you use it as a seed. Okay. And let's see, as far as tet meshing goes, that's really all I wanted to talk about, um, especially for an introduction. So again, uh, tet meshing is great, super easy to do. I highly encourage you to use these options in here, curvature-based refinement, as well as setting your tet collapse to a particular number dependent on your solver. And um, go from there. Just keep in mind that the trade-off is the amount of elements that you're going to have to need to uh, generate this. So the hex mesh for this part, uh, maybe four or 5,000 elements for a similar quality type of mesh. So just something to keep in mind. And with that, I hope everyone uh, is staying healthy, doing well, and we will do this again next week. Thanks.